There's a lighthouse on the hillside that overlooks my sea. When I toss, it seems I'm alive that I might see. If it wasn't for that old lighthouse, my ship would sail no more. Everybody that lives around us says, why don't you tear that lighthouse down? Though the big ships, they don't sail this way. Ain't no use of it standing round. But then my mind goes back to that stormy night when just in time I saw the light, oh, the light. From that old lighthouse that stands up there on the hill. I On behalf of the family, I would like to thank you for attending both here at the church for those that are here and then those that may be watching uh, live or will watch later as we celebrate the homegoing service of Miss Rita. I don't say celebrate because we're happy to see her go. We can celebrate because we know where she's at and it's certainly something we can most surely celebrate. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 28, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray, for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession it, the Bible says here, maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. The great promise is found here in Romans 8, 26 through 28, or no doubt a promise for you if you're saved today. If you're saved here today, the Holy Spirit has a ministry for you between here and heaven. And it surely, surely plays a big part in our life when we, when we lose a loved one, a wife, a sister, a cousin, a friend, a family member. The Holy Spirit plays that role for us. 
The Holy Spirit is in this ministry of Romans 8, 26 through 28. It helps us when we're weak. And as I shared with the family earlier, I've not gone through this path like they're going through. And I'm not sure what it's like to be weak, how they're weak. But I know the promises of the Bible and the Holy Spirit has made a promise to be there when you're weak. The Holy Spirit, according to these verses, will talk for us when we don't know what to say. Maybe there's a prayer of uh, a prayer we're offering to God where we simply don't know how to pray, and the Holy Spirit knows how to translate that from us to God. What we also see in this verse, in between Romans 8 and 26 through 28, is that the Holy Spirit knows our needs better than we know them ourselves. And the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to comfort us. Jesus said there in John 16 that I've got to go so the Comforter can be here. And I praise God for the ministry of the Holy Spirit in times like this. It's interesting too also in this verse. And it says, and we know that all things work together for good. The Bible says to them that love God. God has made a promise to believers that you don't have to be doing His will, His way perfectly for Him to comfort you. He says, for those that love Him, all things work together for good to them that love God. I'm glad to know we got a God like that in heaven that knows His children and wants to wrap His arms around His children. The Bible tells us in Psalm 46, verse 1 and 2, the Bible says that God is our refuge and strength and says a very present help in trouble. Therefore, in verse number 2, it says, we will not fear. It don't say we won't suffer. It don't say we won't hurt. It don't say we won't be lonely. It says we will not fear. In the wee hours of the morning, as Brother Tim and Miss Linda was holding the hands of Miss Rita, you know what I watched in their eyes as they were holding her hands as she was leaving this life to the next? I saw sorrow. I saw loneliness. I saw hurt. I did not see fear. They had nothing to fear that night. For they knew that when she drew her last breath here, that she was going to be present before the Lord. No doubt they're lonely. I watched the tears fall from their face as we, as we watched her take her last breaths. I know they miss her. They love her. Like all of you do. But they did not fear. The Bible tells us in Psalm 46 and 1 and 2 that God is our refuge, our strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Every time you understand this verse, it's right now a very present help. God is our refuge in the fact that He will shelter us and protect us from danger or distress. The Bible tells us, we'll see later here in the service, that we can sorrow, we just sorrow not like everybody else, for we have hope. You see, there's a resurrected life a Christian will enjoy in heaven forever and ever and ever. And right now, we have the shell of Miss Rita sitting here before us, but her soul and spirit, can I tell you, is seated right now together to be absent from this body, is to be present with our Lord. Praise God. And boy, there's a promise in the Bible that one day this body will be raised up and will be made whole. Praise God. She will have a perfect body like that of Christ, the Bible tells us. That's promises for us, not that we don't sorrow, we sorrow with hope. You know what I saw as I watched Miss uh, Rita take her last breath? I didn't watch, I didn't watch uh, Brother Tim and I didn't watch Miss Linda. I didn't really watch them say goodbye. If I translated what I saw that night, what I watched them say in their actions was, see you later. I'll see you again soon. And what I'm trying to tell you here this morning and uh, this afternoon is that as a believer, we have a tremendous amount of hope. You know why this hurts so bad? Because you love so much. I would rather feel the hurt because I experienced the love than to never feel the hurt because I never loved. We have a husband, sister, and family and friends that no doubt loved Miss Rita. The Bible says that God is our refuge according to Psalm 46. The Bible says that God is our strength. 
And that He understands the sorrow we have with hope. So what does He do? He supports us in these times. There you have the Holy Spirit's ministry we read in Romans 8 and verse 26 that is there for us when we don't know how to be there and communicate to God ourselves. The Holy Spirit can utter, the Bible says, on our behalf. According to Psalm 46, God is our refuge, God is our strength, and God is our help. He's there to help you limp along sometimes and get you through this time of life. And boy, as a local Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church, it's our job to couple alongside to be that help and that assistance as well. But the chief example here is that of God and that of the Holy Spirit. Before we move on any further, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank You so much. We thank You for Your love. We thank You for the cross. We thank You for the, the shed blood of Jesus that was that was spilt on our behalf for the sin that we owe. Lord, we thank You for the everlasting love that You've given us from heaven through Jesus Christ. And Lord, as we're gathered here today to remember the life of Miss Rita, we ask You that You would give just an extra measure of grace to family and friends. Lord, we pray that Your Holy Spirit will complete the job that no doubt it's sent to do and that You've instructed us it will do by making intercession on behalf of this family and on behalf of these friends. We pray that You will comfort the hearts of Brother Tim, Miss Linda, and the entire family. We pray that through this time of loss that You, the Holy Spirit, we pray that You will fill the void that will be found in their life with Your love and allow us as Christians, as a, as a born-again group of children of God, that we will be there uh, for spiritual and physical support this time of need. Lord, we thank You for Your testimony. Well, we thank You for the testimony that we heard of Miss Rita trusting Christ to be her Lord and Savior, knowing uh, that she is there face to face with Jesus Christ. Lord, we know that Miss Rita at this point is feeling what Paul expressed in the Bible. And that for her to live as Christ and die as gain. Lord, we're thanking you that heaven gained a dear saint. Although we sorrow and suffer on this side of heaven, we can be thankful knowing that she is before the face of Christ. Lord, we ask you to be with, be with us the rest of the service and pray that all things that are said and done will bring honor and glory to your name. Lord, it's in your precious Son's name we do pray. Amen. Oh, oh, oh. 
share a memory, a story, or testimony of Miss Rita uh, that's personal to you. We certainly want to give you that opportunity. And if you don't understand, uh, we'll just progress forward with the service. Miss Rita Jo uh, Edwards Cooper, 63, of Tipton, passed from this life to the next. On September 2nd, 2020, at Ascension St. Vincent Hospital in Indianapolis. She was born on December 25th, 1956. No doubt a Christmas gift to her parents. What a day that was. John P. and Catherine L. Gibson Edwards. On October 19th, 1985, she married Timothy W. Cooper, and he survives. Brother Tim shared with me that this October 19th would have been 35 years. And as he shares in his own words, that's no record, but it is something to brag about. And that is something to brag about. I told him I've got a few years before I can catch up with him. So, But thank you for the testimony of loving your wife. Thank you for the testimony of taking care of your wife. And every Sunday, Brother Tim would come in and would update in Sunday school and sometimes midweek service on on his wife and her progression and how she's doing and you know while I'm hearing the testimony of how he's uh, taking care of his wife what what that translated to me as a man that dearly loved his wife and took care of her hand over fist. Miss Rita worked at a uh, Tipton nursing home where she cared uh, cared for the residents laundry in the fall she was able to work alongside her parents at Adler Seeds helping them with the harvest, and later in life she was often seen driving through town delivering flowers for the bouquet barn. Rita was a member of the First Baptist Church here in town and enjoyed helping with the Bible school. And if she was part of the Bible schools, I get to hear about it days gone by, she was part of the jam up times here in this ministry. Uh, one, of the, one of the highlights I hear about First Baptist Church in its past in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and into the 90s was just the dynamic Bible schools they had all the time. And uh, seeing that she had a part of that is just a tremendous testimony. And, and what I couple with that personally is, is what she may not have realized working in the trenches of Bible school, and those that know, know it's trench work, is the kids that witnessed her work ethic. And how many kids saw a love for service and maybe came to Christ because she was willing to give herself of a week during the summer and serve in the ministry. She was a member here, worked in Bible school. She graduated from Tipton High School, the class of 1975. Her hobbies and interests included sewing, making greeting cards, and being in the kitchen baking. Brother Tim was a great recipient of that, weren't you? Amen. She is survived by her husband, Tim, stepson, Tony Cooper of Tipton, sister, Linda Stacy, and husband, Charles of Tipton, and several nieces and nephews that she loved dearly. Standing in the hospital, talking with Miss Linda and Brother Tim, the one thing they kept sharing over and over again was the deep love she had for her family. She loved her family tremendously. Preceding Rita and her homegoing were her parents and sister, Rebecca Nelson. At this time, if there's anybody that would like to add any testimonies, memories, or stories of Miss Rita, now would be a perfect time for that. I'll give you just a couple of seconds, minutes here to collect your thoughts and give you a time to share a story if you would like to. 
anybody. Usually when the first person shares, other people then join on in. So if you want to be the first, you go ahead. Anybody. a competitor, to say the least. Now, Miss Linda, you shared a story with me about that, about her being a competitor. Now, I got to hear some stories of the childhood, uh, childhood days. So, uh, anybody else want to share a story or a testimony or memory there, Miss Rita? Anybody else? She was also a sore loser. <laughs> That's why she was so competitive, to say the least. Amen. Anybody else? She loved all of her nieces and nephews. Amen. Loved all of her nieces and nephews. Anybody else? She just loved to play with little jokes on the guys in the family and then sit back and grin about. <laughs> <laughs> she was a practical joker then, huh? How about that? Amen. She'd work well in the fire department then. That's what the fire department's all about. Amen. Just sit back and enjoy the jokes. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right, we'll listen to this next song by request of one of her, one of her favorites. And uh, Brother Tim asked that we had this song played uh, during the service. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'm plowing to a home on God's celestial shore. Chapter 17, a tremendous book in the Bible. I would encourage you, if you never sat down and just read the book of John, just sit down and read the book of John. Maybe one of the easiest books in the Bible to understand. It's got the gospel all over it. It's just a great book of comfort, a great book of conviction, and a great book of calling. The book of John tells us in John chapter 17, verses 1 through 3, it says these words, spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. In verse 2 he says, As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. 
Verse 3, he says, And this is, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I want to share with you here, just out of this little passage of Scripture here, a few thoughts in the prayer that Christ offered up to God in heaven. As Jesus Christ is praying here in verse number 1, you see first of all that Christ prays a very personal prayer. When He prays His prayer, the first thing He says is, Father, Jesus was no doubt connected with God because Jesus is God, but He shows us the personal connection. Secondly, when Jesus Christ is praying here, uh, Jesus is recognizing before God and for our example that there are appointments in life. As we were sharing with the family earlier, most everyone celebrates the birth of a newborn. We all understand this is an appointment in life that we all must face. Nobody's ever really ready for this, but the only thing that makes this possible to go through is knowing of the salvation of the one that's before us. And we can thank God today that Miss Rita knows God as her father. Amen. We can thank God today that Miss Rita uh, knew that her hour was coming and therefore she made sure that she knew God as her father. Jesus, as He prays here, He says He wants to glorify Thy Son. And as He prays, Jesus Christ prays a very specific request. He makes it very personal and very poignant with God. Um, as He says, I want to glorify Thy Son. What Christ is asking, in essence, from God of heaven, He's asking this. He wants strength to endure the cross. And as He prays in this heartfelt uh, request to God. Not only does he have a specific request, he has a specific reason, and the reason was that the Son, Christ, may be glorified. As I read through verse 1, I couldn't help but think of our scenario here today. <laughs> Is that Miss Rita Cooper has a personal relationship with God the Father. And the very reason you are here today is because you have a personal relationship with her. And I would like to beg you today because I don't know everybody personally. I would like to beg you today that if you want to see Miss Rita again, if you'd like to see Jesus Christ face to face, I beg you and plead with you. Trust the Lord Jesus Christ to be your Savior. If Miss Rita could come back to heaven and say one thing and she's given one opportunity to talk, she's going to say this, I guarantee you. She's going to tell you, make sure your faith and your trust is in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're all guaranteed this day. We're all guaranteed in eternity. And without the Lord Jesus Christ being the Savior of our life, our eternity would be spent in a devil's hell and not a God's heaven. And she would come back today and say, listen, heaven's real and heaven's worth it. As we're sitting here today, I kept thinking about this verse and I could only think about the specific request. The request here to pray for strength and endure the cross is the same request and type that we have to God today. And that is, that is comfort for the sorrow we have. But there's also a request for the lost to be saved. The specific reason is that, is that here that thy son may be glorified. And our specific request today is, is not only a thankfulness that we have assurance knowing uh, from her life in general about her testimony. Is that we can rejoice knowing that she has left this life with the seal of the Holy Spirit of God on her life. She's in heaven today. In verse number 2, it says, As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that, that, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Not only did he have a heartfelt prayer, he had a heartfelt giving of information. Christ glorified God by offering eternal life. And we can 
we can rejoice in the fact to know that Miss Rita has trusted Christ to be your Savior and to make the plea, uh, make the case and the plea one more time for God uh, so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. God gave His Son so that all men could be saved. And I guarantee you that this Rita's plea today would be no Christ to be your Lord and Savior. Jesus gave a beautiful explanation in verse 3. And if we define it out, He said eternal life is unending. He says eternal life is lived in the presence of God. Eternal life relates to God. Eternal life is a splendid life. Eternal life is secured only through Jesus Christ. And eternal life can be absolutely known if you place your faith and trust in Christ. I've mentioned several times here today about the resurrected life. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter number uh, 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. And verse number 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. It says that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Sorrow is a normal part of life. Amen? There's a void. There's a vacancy. But we sorrow with hope. Why? For if we believe, the Bible says in verse 14, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with Him. Right now, Miss Reed is asleep. Her body is physically asleep. She is with Christ. And Christ will come back and raise these bodies from the dead, those that have trusted in Him. The Bible says over in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. And verse number 52. It says in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. We shall be changed. Brother Tim would come in Sunday after Sunday sharing updates and prayer requests with the physical struggles that Miss Rita had. I'm here to report today she has no more struggles. She has no more pain. She has no more sorrow. She has no more anguish with her physical life. And not only so, but God's going to take this shell of a body and He's going to raise it incorruptible. Some say, what's incorruption look like? I don't know. Never seen it. But I know whatever it is, God's got it worked out. God's going to raise up this corruption incorruptible and, and this mortal will put on immortality. So when, verse 54 this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass uh, the saying that is written, and we can answer the question, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? Can I tell you this, that as I watched Miss Rita take her last breaths on September 2nd, she did not have the sting of death. She entered into heaven's glory before Jesus Christ. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? For when this physical body is resurrected, I'm not sure the physical makeup of how the ground is going to bust wide open, but I know this much, that grave will have no victory. Death will have no sting because God is going to raise this uh, body incorruptible. He's going to bust the graves wide open because 56 says, the sting of death is sin and the strength of the sin uh, is the law, but thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord. Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye you know your labor is not in vain. The Lord. The body's going to have problems going down, but it's going to be perfect going up. The body's going to be worn out as it passes from this life. But in the next one, we'll have all the power it will ever need. This old body will come to earth as a fleshly body that's made to break down because of the nature of sin. But can I just give you some words of confirmation that this old body is going to be raised up as a spiritual body to never face the temptation and draw of sin 
again. And as a saved child of God, the only thing I know to say is to God be the glory. Miss Rita is only asleep because of our faith. We can tell Miss Rita, see you later. Because I'm going to heaven. As we get ready to close this part of the service, I'm going to ask you the question. If God were to take your life today, are you 100% certain that you would meet Christ as your Lord and Savior? Or would you meet Him as your judge? Everybody's got tomorrow until it never comes. Make sure that you know that you know that you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. The Bible says that when one sinner comes to repent it, the angels rejoice in heaven. Could you imagine today that someone in this room is lost and gets saved and heaven breaks out in a celebration because you responded to the gospel. Miss Rita gets to witness the party in heaven over a sinner that repents. Well, that's what the Bible says. What a celebration that is. If you've never put your faith and trust in Christ, please come find me. At this point, nothing is more important than you knowing for sure that if you left this life, heaven would be your home. Brother Tim, I know you're going to miss your wife. The way I've seen you love her has made an impact on my life. You have loved her unconditionally. My goodness. My prayer is that I could have half the testimony you got and your love for your wife. So thank you. I'm praying for you. Miss Linda, know you loved your sister. As competitive and mischievous as she was, you loved her. We're praying for you. To the family, friends, nieces, nephews, cousins, however you're related. I know there's a void, but there's a Holy Spirit that can fill it. He's there for you. If you've never put your faith and trust in Christ, let today be your day of salvation. We can take the Bible and show you how to know for sure, for sure, for sure that Christ is your Lord and Savior. Let's bow our heads for a word of closing prayer. Dear Lord, we do thank you again for the day. We thank you for the time that we can celebrate Ms. Rita's life, what she meant to those who are so near and dear to her heart. We thank you that we can come to you in a moment of need and make our petitions before you. Lord, we'd ask you now to take the things that have been said and done. We ask you, God, to comfort the hearts of those here. Lord, we ask you to let us draw near to thee as, as you have drawn near to us. We ask you, God, to be the comfort and the strength. Lord, we ask you, as we sit here this afternoon, that if anyone has not ever put their faith and trust in you as their Savior, that today would be their day of salvation. Lord, we love you. We thank you for all you're going to do. We thank you for what you've already done. And most of all, we thank you for the precious gift of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. It's in his name we do pray. Amen. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 19, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return into the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return.
the book of Psalm chapter 23, many familiar with and can probably quote it along with, says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still water. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For Thou art with me, Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. One more verse out of the book of Philippians, chapter 4, and verse number 4 through 7. The Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your, let your moderation be made known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We're going to sing the first verse of Amazing Grace. And then we'll conclude this funeral service with a word of prayer. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. The Bible tells us, For by grace are we saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Let us pray. Dear Lord, again we come to you one more time today, petitioning you, Lord, to comfort the hearts, to support where the hurt is, Lord, to to uh, fill the void, Lord. Uh, use that ministry of the Holy Spirit we read so clear about out of Romans chapter number 8. Lord, again, we thank You for the testimony we know of Miss Rita having called upon the Lord to be her Savior. Lord, I thank You for those that have gathered here today that uh, love her and that have been a part of her life and if she's made an impact on the Lord, I pray that while the body may have stopped, that the memory does not quit and will live on forever and ever and ever. And the more the days go by, the sweeter those memories get. And Lord, we thank You for that. Lord, I pray now as we commit this body back to the ground from which it was made, that everything we've said and done has brought honor and glory to Your name and that Christ has been exalted. That this saint of God, Miss Rita, has been celebrated and this family has been comforted. Lord God, we love You. Thank you for loving us. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.